we're hard hearted, that's a big thing actually. Right? So, so if you're there eating a piece of meat, for example, for dinner, and you're not crying at the same time, <laughs> your heart has become hearted. hearted. <laughs> to that particular injury. Does that make sense? Right? Because if, if you really understood everything that was going on, you would feel the pain of that animal, you would feel the pain that you created because you're eating the meat from it, right? and you would not be able to do it again. See, when, it, when we become hardened to something in the world around us, we are no longer in a state where we're open emotionally and we are now in denial. Right? <clears throat> what if our beliefs are such that it's okay? Oh, of course, yeah, you can tell yourself that's what a hard heart does. Mm -hmm. Tells itself okay. that your beliefs are okay. But we're talking about here God's beliefs. What are God's feelings? If you want to be at one with God, you're going to have to get to know God's feelings, not yours. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to know yours too, yeah. of course. But don't you kill tomatoes and vegetables even? I mean, it's... See, that's another great justification for being hard-hearted. I'm asking, okay, I'll ask it as a question. Go on, if, ask Are we question. killing everything that we're consuming? Yeah, but you look at how things are created. We've had this discussion before. Some things, that, some things when you eat them, die. Other things when you eat them, propagate. Do they not? Yep. Right? So the things, like, if, if there's things that multiply and propagate, and you're eating them, then obviously that's more harmonious with love than things that are dying when you eat them. Maybe you need to explain that. I don't know. You, did you get that about? Well, let's, like tomato? a sheep. If you if you slaughter a sheep, it's now dead, right? Yeah. You can't bring it back to life, can you? Mm. Right. But if you uh, if you eat a tomato, there's seeds in the tomato, and you can just get all those seeds out, plant them, and away you go, and you've got more tomatoes. Mm. So one creates life. In fact, the tomato has to actually have its flesh removed to get at those seeds to create life. Mm -hmm. The other one doesn't create life; it just kills life. So which one's harmonious with love? A lot of people are very resistive to this meat discussion. Um, <laughs> <Ooh. yeah. laughs> so, what, so what's wrong with dairy product in milk, cheese? There's nothing wrong with the product itself. It's, what's wrong is what man does to create that product. Yeah. You look at the actions that man takes to give you milk. We were talking about it the other day to a farmer and he said, he said in th within three days he slaughters all of the calves. Right? He just slaughters them and buries them. Right? Because it's too hard to sell them and it's too hard to take them to the slaughter. So he just slaughters them and, and munches them up because he wants the mother milk. He wants the mother's milk. Right? So if that wasn't happening, then sure, having milk would be fine. So if you've got a dairy cow and you milk it yourself with love, yeah, there's no problem with that. Enough milk. For baby and There's plenty of milk for yeah, both, yeah. but what? Why do they kill the calves yeah. so that they maximise the yield of the yeah. mother? Oh. So, right, so that they get more profit. So, is that loving? Well, if you're drinking milk, you're enabling that process to continue, unless you're drinking milk from somebody who's not doing that. Yeah. Yeah. How can you guarantee that? The only way to guarantee that is to go to a farm and ask them whether they do that. Yeah. And like, so can you see what's going on? Yeah. Besides the fact that your body isn't meant to eat it after a certain period of time anyway, let's face it, the body doesn't even digest it, but that's a separate discussion in itself, yeah. right? The truth is that if you look at love, you'll know what to do, mm -hmm. right? Like how many of you have some Kentucky Fried Chicken? Mm -hmm. Go onto a website that talks at how they get their chickens. You won't want to eat another chicken again, I guarantee you. Mm -hmm. But you know what we've done? We become hard-hearted, and therefore we deny what's really going on. How many of you care about what's happening in the Middle East, really? Really, like, really? Right? Yeah. Would you say we were telling not the truth if we said yes? Well, many of you would be not telling the truth, yeah. You, t you care about it in an external sort of way, many of us, but you're not, we're not looking at what's creating it in many cases, and addressing our own conduct in what's creating it. Okay? So look at that. Look, look, 
Don't be hard-hearted about what's going on. But this is like being in hell. What's like being in hell? <laughs> when you when you really get committed and yeah. you start to feel about the cows yeah. and the calves yeah. and the Middle East. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and your examples, don't laugh at me. Yeah. Your examples. Spot on. I'll give you other examples. Chickens. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what do you feel? treat each other. What yeah. do you feel? Sad. So you feel it. Grief. Feel it, yeah. Deep, grief. Deep, deep yeah. grief. So feel that. And Connect sadness. To that. And p pain and death. And resolve inside of yourself that you'd never want to create any of that anymore, yourself. Like, how many of you ladies, diamond ring on a finger? Have you looked at yes. that? Have you looked at what you're creating? Go and watch Blood Diamond the movie. Yeah, yeah go and watch Blood Diamond the movie. Yeah. And see what you're creating. Like, diamond rings, diamond earrings, diamond jewelry. See what you're creating. Now, sure, in a different world, it will be created a different way. But let's look at the world we're in now and see what we're creating and stop being hard-hearted about it all. Because when you harden your heart, you're denying your soul. When you deny your soul, you'll never be at one with God. Mm -hmm. AJ, even though it's the norm of our society to eat meat and you know, we're so overexposed to violence and all that sort of stuff like that, yeah. is that just not taking Yeah, it's the norm, it's just an excuse, let's face it. Like, I know, how many people are in a one minute condition, did I say, on the earth at the moment? Yeah. I wonder why. <laughs> because it's not the norm, is it? So we're going to have to learn to live out of the norm, for a while at least, if we want to be in that condition. Yeah? Uh, AJ, how, with, this, with respect to this one, our heart is heartened by how we hurt others by treating them unlovingly. Um, how do you handle it when people accuse you of being hard-hearted when you know that yourself that you're being loving to them? Remember that all of this hard-heartedness is not about your own definition of what's hard or somebody else's definition. It's God's definition of what's hard that matters. So is telling the truth from God's definition a hard-hearted thing to do? No. no. But how many of you feel that when you tell the truth, you're hurting someone. Quite a few, right? Yeah, so we obviously have an incorrect belief when it comes to that particular belief. So what I'm asking myself constantly is, what does God think about what this is going on here? Not what does the person think? Or what does the person expressing at me? So if the person's projecting anger at me because I've just told them the truth, right? I know that my intention was honourable, my intention was based on love, my intention was to help them get into a state of more truth, which is going to bring them closer to God. So their response is not, you know, their response actually doesn't matter as long as I've been in that state myself. And how do, it, when we find ourselves in that situation, how can we be sure, like we're not you, how can we be sure that we're not genuinely being hard-hearted and we're fooling ourselves and we're in denial in some way or other about our hard-heartedness? By staying in contact with your own emotion. Are you feeling completely connected with your own emotion? Are you feeling God's love flowing through you at that particular moment? Are you feeling you know, connected with the person itself? Do you have compassion for the person even when they're angry with you? Right? Because if you do, then you are staying connected and you are in love. But if you're not, and you're getting angry back, and you're getting upset, and all those kind of, then you're not in love anymore. Mm. So deal with that. That's another denial <laughs> of the soul. Mm. Yeah. Because Marcus and type yeah. is all right in the house. Yeah. Well, let's talk about an ideal world for a start. Yeah. In an ideal world, a cow still dies. I'm just being silly. Right. Stupid question. But in an ideal world, a cow still dies. So in the end, you could use the, that hide. For, and also the meat or, and other things for whatever you wished, yeah. right? If it died a natural death. Yeah. But, we know that but we know in most cases that's not what's happening. So nowadays what I do is avoid those things. Now, I, I do have some leather jackets from when I didn't respect that. Yeah. And I'm not going to throw them away because that would also be disrespectful of that. So, so what I'm doing is changing what I'm doing from now onwards. Right? Just that's change. All really. That's all we can do. Yeah. Because one of those knows what we're facing. 
And he also knows your intention and your feelings. Yeah. He knows we want, your desire. Yeah. We want to be perfect, like a father, we say, but there's going to be more than a couple of nights to achieve that. Yeah, you, you won't be able to decide it all today and be there tomorrow. Yeah, he yeah. knows. And you do need to feel it. So a lot of you, like with the discussion about meat, keep eating meat if that's what you feel. I'm not telling you to stop, am I? You are, really. No, I'm not. I'm not making Making me feel Making me feel guilty. I don't make you feel anything. What are you talking about? You just feel guilty. You just feel guilty. Go with it. <laughs> you need to feel guilty if you're going to change that right. <laughs> Exactly. See, the problem is a lot of times you're saying, oh, you're making me feel guilty. No, you're feeling guilty because your soul inside knows that eating meat is actually not good for you. It's not good for the environment. It's not good for the world. It's not good for the piece of meat you just ate. It's not good for the animal, right? You know this, right? If you're in a state of love, you know it. You're just trying to be hard-hearted about it and get away from it. Because why? Because you're just addicted to this taste, right? Or you're addicted mm. to something else that's going on emotionally. You're addicted to the feeling of being full with meat. And nothing else gives you that feeling except the meat. Right? Deal with the addictions. Face the truth, you know. 